For millions of years, while colossal dinosaurs thundered across the land and monstrous reptiles patrolled the seas, another equally formidable empire dominated the skies. They swooped and soared, hunted and nested, filling the very air with life. Often mistaken for their famous cousins, they were not dinosaurs at all. Yet, they were the true masters of the Mesozoic skies, pushing the boundaries of flight to unimaginable extremes. From the earliest winged pioneers to the largest flying creatures our planet has ever seen, these were the pterosaurs, a diverse and astounding group of reptiles that revolutionized air travel millions of years before birds ever graced the heavens. Their story is one of incredible evolutionary innovation, unparalleled aerial dominance, and ultimately a mysterious end. Welcome to Terra Time Capsule, your time machine to a forgotten world, where we explore the strange, the savage, and the spectacular life before humans. Not dinosaurs. The crucial distinction. Let's clear up a common misconception right away. Despite their shared era and fearsome appearance, pterosaurs were not dinosaurs. While both groups belonged to a larger lineage called archosaurs, the ruling reptiles, they branched off very early in their evolutionary history. Think of it like this. Humans and monkeys are both primates, but were distinct species. Similarly, pterosaurs are cousins to dinosaurs, but a separate evolutionary lineage, just as distinct as crocodiles are from birds. The key differences lie in their fundamental anatomy, especially their adaptations for flight. Dinosaurs had upright limbs beneath their bodies, perfect for walking or running on land. Pterosaurs, however, evolved entirely unique modifications for aerial life. Their wings weren't feathered like a bird's, nor were they bat-like. Instead, a membrane of skin, muscle, and other tissues stretched from a dramatically elongated fourth finger all the way down to their ankles. Their bones were remarkably hollow and lightweight, even more so than many birds, to reduce body mass for flight. Pterosaurs first appeared in the late Triassic period, roughly 220 million years ago, long before many of the famous dinosaurs we know today. This makes them the very first vertebrates to achieve powered flight, millions of years before birds and bats ever took to the skies. Their pioneering aerial existence laid the groundwork for all future vertebrate flyers. But how exactly did these ancient reptiles defy gravity? The engineering of flight, anatomy of an airmaster. Pterosaur flight was a marvel of natural engineering, unlike anything seen before or since. Their most striking feature was, of course, that incredible wing. It was a complex membrane, or patagium, stretched between their unbelievably long fourth finger and their ankle. This membrane wasn't just a simple sheet. It had internal fibers and muscles that allowed the pterosaur to control its shape and stiffness, optimizing it for different flight conditions, whether soaring, gliding, or actively flapping. Beneath that intricate wing lay a body perfectly sculpted for the air. Pterosaur bones were remarkably hollow and air-filled, making them incredibly lightweight. Some bones were as thin as paper, yet they were surprisingly strong, reinforced by internal struts. Their sternum, or breastbone, was deep and keeled, providing a large surface area for the attachment of massive flight muscles, powering their wings with tremendous force. Even their brains were specialized. Paleontologists have found that the part of their brain responsible for coordination and balance during flight, the cerebellum, was unusually large and well-developed. The question of how these varied creatures launched themselves into the air has been a long-standing debate. Smaller, earlier pterosaurs might have launched bipedally, like birds. But for the massive later forms, Evidence suggests a powerful quadrupedal launch, using all four limbs to push off the ground with immense force, launching themselves directly into flight. Once airborne, they were masters of the ancient skies, capable of both powerful flapping flight and efficient soaring, 
covering vast distances across continents and oceans. But this mastery manifested in a stunning array of forms. Diversity in the air, from tiny hunters to elaborate crests. Over their 160 million year reign, pterosaurs evolved into a bewildering variety of shapes, sizes, and lifestyles, occupying nearly every aerial niche imaginable. The early pterosaurs of the Triassic and early Jurassic were often smaller, with comparatively short wingspans and long, sometimes rudder-tipped tails. Take Dimorphodon, for example, a Jurassic pterosaur with a large, deep skull and a short, stout body, likely a generalist hunter of insects and small vertebrates. They were agile flyers, adapting to various hunting strategies above land and water. As the Mesozoic progressed, pterosaurs grew larger and more specialized. The most famous might be Pteranodon, a magnificent late Cretaceous pterosaur from North America, known for its toothless, pointed beak and a prominent backward-sweeping crest. With wingspans up to 7 meters, Pteranodon was a master glider, fishing over vast prehistoric oceans, likely plunging into the water to snatch fish with its long jaws. But aerial hunting wasn't their only trick. Some pterosaurs, like Ramphorhynchus, retained long, stiff tails, sometimes ending in a diamond-shaped vein, which likely acted as a rudder. Others, like the bizarre Pterodostro from South America, developed hundreds of long, needle-like teeth in their lower jaw that acted like a sieve, suggesting they were filter feeders, straining tiny crustaceans from the water, much like flamingos today. Then there were the incredibly crested pterosaurs like Tapajara and Tupendactylus, often thought to be ground-dwelling generalists, using their elaborate head crests for display, perhaps to attract mates or signal to rivals. Their diversity was truly astounding, proving that there was no single pterosaur way of life. The reign of the Colossi, Earth's largest flying animals. While many pterosaurs were fishers or insectivores, towards the very end of the age of dinosaurs, in the late Cretaceous, one group of pterosaurs achieved truly monumental scales, becoming the largest flying animals Earth has ever seen. These were the Ashdarshids, and their undisputed king was Quetzalcoatlus Northropi. With an estimated wingspan of 10 to 11 meters and standing as tall as a giraffe when on the ground, Quetzalcoatlus was a truly awe-inspiring sight. Unlike many earlier pterosaurs that fished over oceans, these colossal flyers were primarily terrestrial. Their long necks and huge pointed beaks suggest they were opportunistic predators and scavengers, likely striding across inland landscapes, snatching up anything from small dinosaurs to early mammals, or scavenging large carcasses. Its immense size required a powerful quadrupedal launch, essentially vaulting itself into the air like a giant pole vaulter. Other Ashdarchids, like Hatsogopteryx from Romania, rivaled Quetzalcoatlus in wingspan, but were even more robust, with wider, more powerful skulls, suggesting they may have preyed on larger, more active prey in their island environment. These were the ultimate aerial predators and scavengers, ruling the very air above the last of the dinosaurs. The end of their empire, why they vanished. After over 160 million years of aerial dominance, the reign of the pterosaurs came to a dramatic end. Their ultimate demise came with the K-Pige extinction event 66 million years ago, the very same asteroid impact that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. The global winter, the ash clouds, the collapse of food chains. These conditions were devastating for all large animals, including the magnificent pterosaurs. While some smaller pterosaur species might have been declining before the impact, due to increased competition from the rapidly diversifying early birds, the asteroid strike delivered the final, fatal blow. Unlike birds, whose smaller size, faster reproductive rates, and more versatile diets may have given them an edge in the aftermath, no pterosaur lineage survived the global catastrophe. Their unique evolutionary experiment in powered flight came to an end. 
Conclusion The Enduring Legacy of Masters of the Sky From the earliest small hunters to the colossal, giraffe-sized titans of the late Cretaceous, pterosaurs were a truly unique and diverse group of reptiles. They were the original masters of the ancient skies, innovating powered flight millions of years before any other vertebrate. Their story is a testament to the incredible adaptability of life and its boundless capacity for evolutionary invention. Their fossilized remains continue to inspire awe and fuel our endless curiosity about the lost worlds of deep time, reminding us that the sky, too, once belonged to giants. What do you think is the most astonishing pterosaur adaptation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're ready for more incredible journeys into Earth's astonishing prehistoric past, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Terra Time Capsules, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Keep soaring through the grand, wild history of our planet with us.